Today, we will be discussing how to foster a culture of transparency and trust within your organization with Rafael Roca and John Murphy. My name is Karen Schwartz, and I'll be moderating this session. So before we uh, dive into the main discussion, let me quickly guide you through the console. Um, below the slide deck, you will find additional content, including the option to download some material. We have a case study that we published not so long ago with Euralis. You can also download some guides regarding uh, whistleblowing laws around the globe and how whistleblowing programs look today and how they will look tomorrow. If you have any questions during the webinar, feel, please feel free to use the question panel and your questions will be addressed at the end. On the right, you will see a survey. Please submit your feedback at the end of the webinar. We'd love to hear your opinion. Now, let me introduce our expert panel for today. We have Rafael Roca, he's the Partner Success Manager at EQS Group, and John Murthy, the Global Head of Marketing at LGC Asher. He, it's a parent company for BRCGS. So our agenda for today, we are going to talk about, uh, first we're going to do an introduction in the relationship building. Uh, then we're going to go into the importance of a confidential reporting system, the characteristics of an effective reporting solution, a case study and demonstration, and how to manage investigation reports. Now, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with EQS Group, we are a global technology provider that specializes in digital solutions for governance, risk management, and compliance. EQS Group was founded in the year 2000 and it's headquartered in Munich. It's listed on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange and we have over 8,000 clients worldwide. We offer a range of software products and services to help companies effectively manage their compliance obligations, investor relations, and sustainability reports. The key benefits of our solutions, uh, one of the major strengths is our compliance competencies. EQS Group has a team of international experts who closely follow regulations in our countries. So this ensures that our products always meet the highest standards of confidentiality and security. In terms of flexibility, for example, our whistleblowing tool is sector agnostic and serves companies from a large international organizations to SMEs. EQS Group is also, or has also, a strong uh, partner network, collaborating with leading consulting and law firms at national and international level. This partnership helps ensure best practices standards and workflows. With over 20 years of experience and thousands of customers, EQS Group has global knowledge, a global knowledge base that allows them to be truly agile on a global scale. Finally, we foster initiatives and networking to stay updated on the latest compliance trends and build a close client community. As I mentioned earlier, EQS Group offers a suite of digital compliance products. Now we have the option to manage all of them from a single dashboard called the Compliance Cockpit. This comprehensive solution provides compliance professionals with a one-stop shop for all their compliance workflows. Now, with further ado, I would like to hand over to John and Raf. Thank you, Karen. Uh, good morning, good afternoon to everybody. It's a pleasure to speak to you all. Thank, thanks, Karen, for the introduction. Um, my name is, as Karen said, I'm John Murphy. I head up uh, marketing for LGC Assure, of which BRCGS is a, is a um, significant brand. Um, and I thought I'd just start by setting the scene in the context of, of why we're here today. Um, and it's probably best to start with the BRCGS mission, which is to provide globally trusted supply chain assurance services. That means that all actors in the supply chain can have confidence in what they buy from suppliers. And, and to that end, BRCGS over the last 25 years has developed a number of certification programs, as you know, from the farm gate to the retailer, all with the aim of providing a set of standards that improve food safety and are adopted and accepted on a global basis. Just, just as an aside, today is actually World Food Safety Day, which is a UN recognized day. And the theme 
of this year's day is that food standards save lives. So it's, it's very apt and, and very timely um, and emphasizes the importance, I guess, and the value of, 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 of standards. And we've done a number of recent studies commissioned independently and we, where we've showed the role that evidence is that they do save lives and make food safer, whether that's through improved regulatory compliance or fewer product recalls, etc. Now, having said all that, the underlying principle of BRCGS is that its standards are standards. They're designed to evolve and drive continuous improvement. That's a word you, as BRCGS sites, will be very familiar with, is continuous improvement. Um, now, our standards were, were the first to include a number of things like food safety culture, wording around food fraud, blended audits, category exams for auditors, um, a full compliance program, all with the intent, really, to ensure that standards moved with the market, they stayed relevant, and they continued to deliver brands uh, results that brands can trust. Now, in that vein, that's why um, some of our main standards now include the need to have confidential reporting in place. Now, um, your guess from the title of the webinar, whistleblowing, uh, is reference. You know, what, what is that and why? Um, well, a confidential reporting system or whistleblowing platform, um, it provides a channel for staff to feedback, um, whether it's issues around fraud or bribery, corruption, abuse, harassment, intimidation, or any other type of unethical behavior, which if left undetected can lead to significant financial and reputational damage. And there have been a number of high profile examples recently with, with, without naming names. Now it provides the leadership in the business with information, with key information and insight into what is effectively a real set of problems and the opportunity to head off those problems and reduce the consequences in the early stage before they get out of hand or hit um, um, uh, public press, for example. Internally within the business, I think it provides a level of trust. It builds a level of trust between employees and employers, as well as provide confidence to a number of your customers that you're operating in an open and transparent way. Now, to support BRCGS certified sites, BRCGS, we've always worked with partners um, where we've needed additional skills or resource or domain expertise that we can't do ourselves. You're, you'll be very familiar that we have 77 delivery partners, certification bodies that deliver our schemes on our behalf. We work with TSI for food safety culture. More recently, Ecodesk for ESG lead. Um, and in the case of confidential reporting, we've chosen to work with EQS. Now, you've got a very good introduction there from Karen. Um, but we chose to partner with them for a number of reasons. First of all, they're leaders in their, their field. They're, they're leaders in the, in the field of compliance and investor relations solutions. Um, but more importantly to us, I think uh, if, you, if you look at their website, you see that they share many of the common principles of, that, we, that we have in BRCGS, which are transparency, integrity, and building trust. Now, we ourselves are customers. We've been long-term customers of the QS, um, and we use the platform to manage uh, what you'll all be very familiar with, our confidential reporting platform, Tell BRCGS. Now, I think it's important to say that there are other systems on the market, and there are different ways of being compliant to our standard, but I'm going to hand over to Rafe now, who's going to tell you why these platforms are so important to us, especially at these times of you know, turbulent economic conditions. Um, but I, I would take away from this webinar some of the ideas you should consider if you're thinking of investing in a, in a, a digital platform, what are the considerations you'd make um, in the type of platform? So Rafe, over to you. Perfect, thanks John, and yeah, thank you everyone for, for joining. Really appreciate your time on this. Um, so yeah, absolutely, like John says, um, EQS, Partner Success Manager. So essentially working with partners such as BCR, uh, BRCGS. So um, I guess the first sort of element I wanted to touch on was the benefits, the benefits in general around having a confidential um, reporting system. And John's touched on a few elements there. So 
I mean, the benefit initially, the, probably one of the larger elements, is to become compliant, of course, with the with the standard. Um, so, using EQS as an example, it ensures that you fulfil the global standard for food safety, issue eight or nine. If you look at the three sort of main components, there, um, company needs to have a confidential reporting system. It needs to be clearly communicated to staff and to senior management, and there has to be a process for assessing concerns as well. And then, of course, there needs to be records of assessment, and they need to be documented. So certainly ticks all those box, uh, boxes. And then for those trading um, in the EU as well, not only will you want to comply, of course, with the EU directive, um, but you want to also be able to mitigate risk from working within the EU. Um, and then if we sort of look at food safety standards and health in general, and I'm sure everyone who's in attendance, I'm sure everyone's um, <clears throat> certainly very familiar with the challenges that are faced within your industry. Um, you know, just to, just to name a few, but the difficulty currently in terms of rising food prices, the regulatory uncertainties that are ongoing, um, the I suppose, diminished capacity of food inspectors that's ongoing. Um, we've seen because of these issues within the supply chain that the, the result is cost in the billions in recent years. Um, and then additionally, the reduced resources for essential services such as limited vets, health inspectors, food safety officers and environmental officers and, you know, health uh, officers and so on and so forth. So. You know, we are under no illusion that a reporting system will resolve all these particularly complicated issues. But I guess the point we like to make is without an effective reporting system in place, many outcomes will go resolve, unresolved um, or very much easily overlooked. Um, so we, we like to shift the perspective a little bit and look at reporters and whistleblowers as, as the first line of defence, essentially. So... You know, as a business, you would want to hear about specific claims before they escalate um, or before, you know, inspectors find something or, you know, worse comes to worse failing an audit. So, you know, that, that's kind of how we like to look at things. Um, and then if we look at specifically to different departments, so we see from clients that identify in HR issues, for example, um, such as bullying or harassment, these sort of elements are, are critical to organizations. So allowing a digital platform, it means that you can, it, well, it gives you means to be alerted and then effectively carry out an investigation and importantly, carry out that investigation seamlessly through the documentation that a reporting system can provide. Um, and then if we look at health and safety issues, again, something I'm sure everyone's familiar with, um, these can range from working around hazardous substances, workstations, um, manual handling, so on and so forth. So again, you know, without a solid reporting system, it makes it very difficult for the relevant departments to be um, sort of made aware of how critical they, they can ultimately become. And then finally, uh, fraud prevention. And John um, did mention this, but as you can imagine, across all sectors, fraud is a, is a common threat. Um, to to organisations and it you know does drastically affect reputation and and um, there's that financial risk there. So if we specifically apply this to the food safety standards and and um, supply chain industry, then I'm sure you again you're all very much aware of the variations of fraud that are possible. You have adulteration, tampering, um, authenticity theft, diversion, simulation, and notwithstanding the fact that products of poor quality can also be leaked into production. Um, and if I could just sort of highlight a few statistics, for example, from um, the Report of Nations, we see that um, just over 42% of fraud um, are detected by tips, with more than half coming from their employees. So this sort of coinciding with the fact that 60% of these tips came from some form of digital um, and hotline. So I think this certainly highlights that a digital um, reporting system means you are more likely to detect having fraud at an earlier stage, um, which of course is, 
which is the whole point. You want to be able to catch them sooner. Um, so ultimately, it, it allows you to proactively avoid any form of escalation and create um, transparency within your organization as well. I think you don't know so if you have I another question. Those... Yeah, I, I mean, the drivers are there, um, and you only have to Google, actually. the um, uh, A lot of data online about the reputational and financial impact of um, uh, these issues, fraud, et cetera, uh, causing, and, and they, they, they've they gone undetected. So I think the drivers, in terms of regulation, in terms of brand protection, in terms of compliance with BRCGS standards, it's, it's a clause in there. They're, they're clear, but there are different ways of managing this. So what would you consider um, if you're going to buy uh, or sign up to a reporting system, a whistleblowing platform, what, what would you be looking for as a customer? What are the practices? Sure. So, yeah, as I say, that sort of touches on what are the key characteristics. And, you know, as you say, that there are a variety um, of, I suppose, solutions um, to consider and and many elements to consider as well so i think from our experience again working with clients and, and you know years of doing these implementations some of the key factors to consider firstly is having it become easily accessible to all the employees essentially the whole idea behind having a reporting system is it should feel easy and streamlined and um, for your employees they should feel comfortable in making a report and you know i will be running through a demo shortly so i'll be able to sort of demonstrate how easy it is from the perspective of the reporter and essentially it's just a case of utilizing the web portal um with a specific url to your organization but even as simple as having access via your mobile as well a lot of people work remote and a lot of young people prefer to use uh, mobile as a form of reporting so that's an example but i think it's worth looking at the fundamentals of why speak up culture is is affected, why people typically don't. You know, uh, many have a fear of retaliation or the, you know, perhaps lack of promotion. Um, there is the belief that senior leadership are already aware of an issue or um, a genuine lack of confidence that corrective action will be taken um, or simply that it's common practice. So by establishing a really straightforward, accessible tool for your business. Um, it allows these sort of fundamentals to be uh, somewhat apprehended, I'd say. Um, and then, of course, working with different regions. I know there's different regions on this webinar today. So I think making it available in multiple languages is, is um, something certainly to consider. So allowing reporters to raise a case in their preferred language again making it feel comfortable and easy for them um, but then likewise making the case manager assigned be able to translate and report back as well in their preferred language um, so i suppose that just widens the scope um, in regards to cases being raised and the regions that are capable of reporting um, again on the case management system so Again, I'm going to use ours, um, EQS's Integrity Line, as an example, but ours is hosted in a secure, encrypted environment where case managers manage incoming cases. Um, there's a few elements to consider on this, um, but you want, to, uh, you want it to allow a flexible combination with other reporting channels. So perhaps you have a hotline or email, so you want, to, you want it to work seamlessly alongside those, if that's a preferred... Um, element um, but I think what's key is you want your management system to provide those that extensive analysis of statistics as well which is of course essential for the food safety standard um, and again I will sort of run you through that uh, shortly and show you what that looks like um, and then of course robust documentation and what I mean by that really is to be able to provide a full audit trail of, of all of the whole case and the cases that you are um, ultimately looking at. So again, integrity line on ours, it's available throughout the platform um, from the inception of a report to its, to its outcome and closure. And again, touching on the reporting, the metrics and the dashboard as well. Um, so all of this is documented, which makes it really easy. 
Um, automation, I'm not going to go into too much depth on this because, again, I'm, I'm going to show you. But through our data center application that we hold, you can use data sync to automatically synchronize employee data from HR systems or Active Directory into the compliance cockpit. But I'll, I'll touch on that shortly. The point there is you can automate your entire uh, compliance uh, program, essentially. And then finally, security. I think, of course, we, you want to make sure it's secure. So you want to make sure that the solution you're providing is fully ISO accredited and that, um, you know, the, the whistleblower's um, anonymity is protected throughout the process as well. So they're sort of the key characteristics to, to bear in mind, I'd say. Thanks, Ralph. That's a useful overview there. And certainly a number of those factors were important to us with TEL BRCGS, number of languages, um, automation notifications and the case management system and of course security was um, extremely important now I'll, I'll give Ruff just a just a, a breather for a minute because he mentioned trailed ahead to a live demo which uh, just before you all joined I thought was brave both showing a live demo of the system and also trusting his internet but um, I, it, it's very useful for us to understand behind the scenes how it works um, and to see um, underneath the hood, um, but also understand who else is using the system in the food sector. So, Rafe, over to you. Sure, absolutely. So I think this just proves um, that we are um, established within the food and beverage sector. So this is just a few names as an example. I think it sort of highlights that when, you know, I mean, EQS in general, we do work with a um, number of organizations ranging from different employee sizes, but also, um, you know, some, some real solid names there as well within your, within your industry. Good, Deva. And um, uh, I, the, we're, we're coming to the, we've got about 20 minutes left now, and we, we've covered most of what we wanted to cover, or Rafe, Rafe has. Um, just, I've seen some questions come through, but um, as you can see on the screen now, the crux of the matter. Um, if you could submit your questions, we will have about 15 minutes or so for questions, or we'll, we'll leave it as long as you can hang around. But uh, Ralph, how, how much does it cost? Yeah, good question. So I know this, <laughs> um, this is obviously a key factor in considering um, these platforms. So essentially, we have pre you'll, everyone att in attendance who are in I suppose working or attributed to BRCGS, we do have preferential pricing because of our partnership. Um, so we typically, the way we price the product is based on the number of employees, number of languages and number of case managers. Um, so as I did mention, we work with organizations ranging from smaller to um, larger organizations. So, you know, it could be as little as 50 euro a month, depending on your size. Um, what we are doing at the minute in terms of um, offering a discount is we're offering a 25% discount for um, any orders placed by the end of July. Um, so obviously everyone in attendance today, um, you, you have that ability to take advantage. Um, we also provide a seven day free trial as well. So I know um, the link will be shared following this, but hopefully that paints a bit more of a picture in terms of the pricing model and, and the offer that we're providing. Um, I think it's worth mentioning as well, depending on the size of your organization, um, we we have sort of different levels of integrity line. So we have integrity line essentials, which is uh, for the smaller organizations, and we have um, integrity line professional, um, which is a slightly more bespoke uh, with a few more bells and whistles as well. Okay, great. So that link um, is available from the BRCGS website. If you go to um, confidential reporting on the digital solutions, you'll, you'll see the link to either click through for the free uh, seven day trial or to uh, register your interest through with EQS. Um, Ralph, I, I've, got a, a, I've got one question. Uh, that follows on from what you said earlier on about what a good implementation looks like. Um, 
how, how much what, what does a successful project look like what, what's the process from i decided i want to buy through to go live sure um okay so i mean again we, through all the implementations that we've done um and you know the thousands of customers we've sort of worked with um I, I, a successful project requires working with different departments from the outset that's typically what we advise again they, they could be completed in, in the matter of days however the best yeah the best sort of um, ask is to evolve as many departments as possible for various reasons so for example including it from the outset makes sense I mean, typically IT um, cloud-based software doesn't require integration with IT infrastructure. However, <clears throat> IT need to validate the security, as you can imagine, of the system. Um, you need to have the most robust security possible in your, um, in your company. So IT should be included from the outset. Um, data protection is, of course, of paramount importance. So, um, you know, a digital platform should be easily demonstrable um, but data protection officers or privacy officers, anyone um, of that nature, they should be made aware of where their data is being held. And then, of course, you should consider, um, you know, how will you be managing the cases? Are you going to potentially triage centrally and then um, distribute case managers or use the system specific for a department like HR? So... Our recurring advice here is just to include as many, uh, the various stakeholders in the entire process um, so they're aware. And then finally, actually, um, communication, uh, that's that's key. You want to ensure that everyone's very much aware of, of the solution. So depending on what your company looks like, but launching the system, um, that should be drafted on what it's going to look like. We've recommended letting your communications team know or marketing. Um, and let them know how to communicate out to the to employees. Excellent. Okay. Um, I have one follow-up question before we hand back to Karen to mediate through the questions. Um, all companies are different. Um, is it possible to have a one-to-one -one demo so we can look at my company in particular? Yes, of course. Yeah, more than happy to do that. Um, I'm sure with the follow-up we can we can arrange. Um, I mean, even via your website, we can we can do it that way. Um, but I know some of our team, will, when we send out the recording or whatnot. Um, but yeah, absolutely happy to do one-to-one -one demos. Every organization is different and uh, there's certain elements they want to discuss. So yes, absolutely to do that. Great. Karen, back to you. Thanks, John. Um, before we continue with the questions, I'm just going to give Raf a second to breathe after all of that, that talking. Um, just wanted to mention, um, as I mentioned earlier, that EQS offers different initiatives. We have a wide ranging uh, calendar of events. So there's multiple events coming up that you can check out in our website. We also um, publish blog articles that you can check. And we also offer a wide range of white papers. So just so you know, there's a lot of content that you can check on our website at integrityline.com and eqs.com. Now let's move to the Q&A session. Uh, so I can see a couple of questions that came through. Number one said, is it available in different, different languages? Raf, I believe you already covered that, but you can maybe um, that's absolutely. Um, yes, yes, they are. Uh, absolutely. So you have the ability to translate as well, as I mentioned. So it's um, available in over 100 languages, and then you can translate um, depending on the reporter, and the case manager can translate as well. So yeah, absolutely. Great. Um, there's another one. It says, how can I leverage that I have a properly functioning mechanism for reporting to show my customers that disclosures in the business are encouraged and acted on? Yeah, that's a good question. So, I mean, different ways, I suppose, but many companies typically publish statistics and then make them available um, on their website. So, uh, for example, how many reports are received um, and how many are validated, for example. That's, that's typical. 
Great. And we have one last question. What does a successful project or implementation look like? Yeah, so I think I, I sort of touched on that earlier. It's what, what John was asking. Um, I think, again, just to sort of reiterate, it's around that communication piece, um, ensuring that you're communicating out. We want, you know, I've hit sort of hitting it home a little bit, but we want um, your employees to feel comfortable in making that report. The whole system should be easy for them to use, and, and it really drives home that speak up culture. So communicating out to your organization is key. Um, what, and again, once it's implemented, once it's live, um, you know, we're, we're always here on hand if you have any further questions. We constantly assist with enablement um, and then in terms of configuration as well. So the process is very straightforward. The integration is very straightforward. But even once it's completed, we're always on hand um, to assist. And those enablement sessions will continue as well. Hopefully that answers the question. Thank you, Rev. There's just one more question. It says, could I add pictures for replying non-conformities? So if you mean, sorry, if you mean by um, adding as attachments to the case, then yes, absolutely. So you can add um, sort of different forms of communication documents and pictures is absolutely fine. Yes, that works well. Thank you. Uh, let me just check if there are any more questions. I think that's it for today. John, so there's okay. actually one more question for you. It says, how does BRCGS support the ISEGA certificate? I don't know if, if it's something that you can answer right now. It's not because it's a new term to me, but I will find out, Mohammed, and get back to you. Perfect. Well, um, then, thank you, everyone, for joining today. If uh, you have any more questions, feel free to just book a one-to-one -one meeting with Raf. I'm sure he'll be able to answer any of the questions that you have. And thank you again, John and Raf, for joining us today and explaining a little bit of what BRCGS and EQS are doing together in partnership. Yes, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Yeah, thanks. Cheers. Bye.